When cash and securities are no longer reliable assets, precious metals are in greater demand, a safe haven for capital. At the height of the financial crisis in 2009, gold prices soared to record highs. In the mid-20th century, gold in Kalima and in the Far East was still predominantly mined by labor camp inmates. But in the 1970s, people from all over the Soviet Union came in droves. Some of them romanticized gold mining, others were simply after wealth. This is what Kalima gold looks like. The Magadan region became Russia's Klondike. The gold rush was here at the end of the world. With the global financial crisis in the 21st century, the gold rush has flared up with renewed force. Magadan is a remote region in the far northeast of Russia. It lies more than 7,000 kilometers from Moscow. The town of Magadan was built because there was gold nearby. Since it was founded 70 years ago, more than 3,000 tons of the precious metal has been mined here. But there's far more still to be found beneath the earth. Misha, move to square one. Okay. A prospecting crew is in the field from early morning till late at night. He's in charge of seven survey routes. At the height of the mining season, each minute counts. Work continues around the clock. Striking gold means first sorting through tons of earth and rock. I think you need to do some work here in order to understand what it means. Gold dust is fed into this machine. Waste is dumped here, but the concentrate moves on to the steps and onto rubber mats. The gold is then flushed, but about 89% of it gets stuck because it is a heavy metal. A miracle occurs in the flushing machine. Pieces of gold appear on the rubber mats right before the prospector's eyes. Hi, guys. How's it going today? Have you got anything there? Yes, I see there's something. Fine, you've done your bit, yeah? Good for you. This team of prospectors has been working here for five years. There are still about 30 kilograms of gold in the rock. Each day, geologists estimate how much is left. Trays are used for mining, just like the old days. It's not the biggest, but it's still gold. There's still something to find here. Everyone working in Kalima's gold fields knows that there are more important things than good weather and reliable equipment, like luck. As the miners say, if Lady Luck's not on your side, you'll go home empty-handed. Sometimes we're lucky, that's for sure. When we are working on a proven deposit, we expect a certain yield. And here we get more gold than expected. That's when diggers are really lucky. Vladimir Yurchakov is about to head to the Taiga where he works. His old car has enough room for some simple mining equipment. This is a kind of small pan. Crews of diggers have a big one. Only three or four people can work with a small one. People like Vladimir are called independents in Kalima. Vladimir works on his own, steering clear of major companies. Companies only issue him a license to work in a designated area. The rest is his responsibility along with his partner, Konstantin. Hi. Let's go. Let's get down to work. Previously, mining here was done by major firms, but their operations weren't profitable. Private entrepreneurs swooped into the void, gaining permission to work in these fields. They need very precise skills, 
manually flushing out gold inaccessible to large machines. Too many mosquitoes. Let's put on the repellent. Large mosquitoes are the worst nuisance in the taiga. On the face of it, mining gold might seem easy, but miners know it's no walk in the park. It's very hard work. It's okay in summer, but in winter it's a different story. When the cold is around the corner in autumn, it's no fun either. The digger's lot is snow, wind and mosquitoes. Those are the conditions in which miners work. Vladimir Yurchakov came to the Far East from Kaliningrad, Russia's westernmost province, to search for gold. He thought it would be a quick stay, but he's now been scouring the taiga for gold for some 20 years. His chief instrument is the pan. Just a few minutes of work in the mud yield the first result. This is from the first rocker, a small nugget. Independent gold mining was allowed in the Magadan region 10 years ago, but today it's a crime. Many of the individual gold diggers had to give up their way of life. Time was when Ruslan Gromov, a former policeman, supported his family by mining gold in the taiga. But when his team of diggers went broke, he took up hunting and fishing. Ruslan still expects the government to reopen the gold fields to all willing workers. I think anyone who wants to make a living should be allowed to work in the taiga. They just should pay taxes, and that's all. Geologist Gennady Gilyashov is also in favor of lifting restrictions on gold mining. He knows all about precious metals in this region. He knows how much has been recovered, how much is still left, and where to look. There are sulfides here. It means that this piece may contain gold. The geologist is confident there will be enough gold for many years to come. The problem, he says, is that only committed miners can recover gold from hard-to-reach places. There are many exploited fields where the rock is very hard, so much so that no machine can get it out. But a digger can do it with only a simple awl or even a spoon. That's how they make a living. Police keep an eye on those who go on mining gold without permission. There are special task forces for this purpose. Each morning they examine the papers of diggers working in the field. I'd like to see your license. We are employed by a contractor. I see. You work under contract. Is the equipment sealed? Yes, it is. You can have a look. Let's go check it out. This equipment is used to extract the gold. The compartment containing the precious metal is sealed. The seal protects against possible theft and also from unnecessary police inquiries. No matter how little gold you find, even if it's only one gram, you're liable to punishment under the law. Free circulation of gold is banned. Gold transactions have to be documented. You need to get a license or a permit or else join a gold mining crew to be able to mine gold legally. Each season, the police sees several kilograms of illicit gold. Most of the offenders are detained when trying to sell gold dust or nuggets. When a group of offenders is detained, this means that they have committed a serious crime. It carries at least five years in jail and confiscation of property. Dredges the size of a five-story building get down to work processing gold dust. People often liken the machines to ships. The Kalema fleet of dredges is under the command of Valery Palyakov. He and his crew have been sifting Kalema's rivers for gold for 10 years. How deep do you go, Palich? 8.6. A dredger is the captain in charge of a dredge. A dredge under his command moves over the riverbed, scoops up rock and flushes it. The gold is extracted manually right on the spot. A day of work yields some 700 grams. 
The drag extracts small pieces of gold. You cannot do it with other equipment. Dredges also have many other merits. Our factory has eight different dredges, all with their own distinct features. Each dredge is operated by five men. This is enough even for such an enormous machine. The members of this crew hail from all corners of the vast region. They don't see their families for quite a long time. Everybody has their own problems, including financial problems. And we try to make up for those problems by paying them good wages. Since video monitors were installed at gold processing factories, gold output has grown considerably. But even continuous monitoring doesn't protect employees from temptation. Security is a prime concern at this factory. It accumulates gold from all over the region. It's hard for people to simply watch the stream of gold passing before their eyes. Grigory Virkiev sees to it that not a single grain of gold leaves the factory. The factory has a video monitoring and alarm system. We pay special attention to the gold depository. The shop where gold is cleansed of admixtures is out in the open where Verkeev can see. He keeps everything under control without leaving his office. Even so, some ingenious employees manage to sneak gold dust out of the factory from time to time. In 2006, we detained a worker at a placer factory who was trying to take out 200 grams of a gold concentrate. He's hidden it in his body, so it does happen. This gold refining factory is one of scores of enterprises of the region's gold industry. All of them are situated in Kalima's so-called gold ring, the area's main attraction. The name has a long history. It was given to the road running through most of the gold fields. The road begins in Magadan, practically looping around the whole Kolema region before returning to its capital. 